Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, coming to see first talk of a day here. I realize people are having a hard time getting up at this point often. Um, my name's Simon Hickling. I'm with uh, DSM Pharmaceutical Chemicals. Uh, my role with DSM is as business manager for biocatalysis and continuous flow chemistry. So I wanted to talk a little bit this morning to you about what DSM are doing in this area and give some brief examples of where we've had success in finding routes using those uh, technologies, scaling them up, and then delivering at the multi-ton scale. First of all, a little bit about uh, DSM and who we are. Um, Overall, we're a, a large multi-chemical company uh, covering both the life sciences and material sciences areas. Um, I'm here representing DSM Pharmaceutical Products, uh, but we also have nutritional divisions, food specialties. Um, we've got a, a dsm Sinochem joint venture covering antibiotics and generics. And we're also involved in a number of performance materials and polymer intermediates. There's uh, over 22,000 employees in total. Uh, sales are uh, just over $9 billion, so there's $9 million there, and uh, we've got over 200 locations worldwide. So we truly are a global company. Within the pharmaceutical products cluster, we've got uh, a number of different units. Um, first of all, there's the chemical unit. Again, I'm here representing that unit, which is predominantly CGMP, API, and advanced intermediate manufacturing. Um, we have a particular emphasis on green chemistry with biocatalysis, uh, homogeneous catalysis, and uh, flow chemistry being the technologies that we preferably use. Uh, but we also have a number of other different divisions. The biologics division, which focuses on uh, production of uh, antibodies using mammalian cultures. Uh, the microbial division, which is uh, more traditional fermentation techniques. And then the uh, finished dosage, which specializes in lyophilization and uh, septic liquid filling. Just overall, when we're looking at uh, producing uh, new routes and scaling up your uh, processes, we're looking towards uh, delivering a sustainable manufacturing solution. So we branded our production techniques as quality for life here, which gives you peace of mind. First of all, that you're getting quality out of our facilities. Secondly, that there is complete reliability, which means on time, in quality, delivery to you. And thirdly, with full traceability, both for the work carried out at our site, but also back into the supply chain. So you know where the ingredients come from, and you can rely on DSM as a safe, consistent source of material. We're also building in sustainability into quality for life, which is our commitment as a corporation to environmentally and commercially sustainable solutions. And when it comes down to the development of new routes and manufacturing in chemistry, we're viewing this very much as uh, green chemistry techniques, such as biocatalysis, continuous flow chemistry, and chemocatalysis. So I want to talk a little bit, first of all, about biocatalysis at DSM. Um, first of all, we have a, a broad collection of off-the-shelf enzymes, uh, over 3,000 available, which have a variety of different applications. Um, In-house, we have excellent expression and enzyme design capabilities, and we have a fully integrated supply chain at DSM. So everything from designing the enzyme, expressing it, scaling it up, fermenting, and using it in production. Uh, we're one of the few companies, in fact, I would say the only company who does all of that work in-house. To date, we've got the, uh, the, the unmet track record of the largest number of products being produced via biocatalysis. We've got 35 commercial routes, which are run between the hundreds of kilo scales and the thousands of ton scale. Uh, because of this, uh, this fully integrated supply chain, we do have a very strong critical mass within the organization for biocatalysis. Uh, we have expertise at all levels in all of these techniques, and so we can uh, offer a solution to whatever point of the, uh, the supply chain you're looking for that solution to be implemented. And we also have an open innovation approach, which I'll talk about in a moment, where we do uh, operate with enzymes from other people who are also experts in the field of biocatalysis. So in the first place, why would you want to use biocatalysis? Well, the industry itself has a number of needs and challenges, as you're all aware. 
First of all, molecules are becoming increasingly complex. Uh, you'll see molecules with three, four chiral centers, uh, which are very difficult to synthesize using traditional chemistries. Um, there's a corporate push generally across the board now to reduce environmental impact. And that can be achieved by implementing shorter synthetic routes. And ultimately, that also typically reduce, uh, reduces cost of goods, which is uh, a, a key factor in the competitive environment that we're in. You also need a scalable solution. I think it's fair to say that a few years back, biocatalysis in the pharmaceutical industry was seen as being more of a uh, laboratory technique, which hadn't been proven at large-scale manufacturing. And over the past uh, few years now, that has been proven not to be the case, and we have some excellent processes being run at very large scale. So biocatalysis is part of uh, DSM's general toolbox here for, uh, for green chemistries. Um, why enzymes, though? They're chemo, regio, and an antioselective. You basically get a very, very pure product out of a biocatalytic route. They act under extremely mild reaction conditions, uh, typically uh, ambient, uh, also pressure and temperature, and uh, with very little solvent in most cases. Um, en enzymes may be engineered for additional improvements. Um, a lot of the enzymes that uh, we use have been engineered uh, for enhanced stability, enhanced turnover, and to really make them a true catalyst in the way they're implemented. And uh, yeah, they act as efficient catalysts. Um, the, the way we typically go about screening and implementing an, an enzymatic process here is you'd start off with uh, gene synthesis, you'd put them into a recombinant system. In our case, we have a system known as Plugbug, uh, which is fully scalable um, to meet the production needs of the commercial enzymes. We go ahead and produce the protein, express it, and then we'll screen in a high throughput mode for activity. Now, we can do this either through new enzymes that are under development or through off-the-shelf collections of both the Codexis and partner enzymes. After that, we would uh, confirm hits for the particular reaction of interest. Then we could go ahead and engineer both uh, either the enzyme or the process itself in order to optimize the reaction. We can scale up the enzyme and the samples, go into production, and then ultimately implement the process. I want to give you now um, a few quick examples of work where we've done this in the past and, and scaled up successfully. Uh, if you look at this, this first example here, this is the production of uh, pravastatin using a P450 enzyme. Um, the classic route has a fermentation step and then a biocat step, uh, all within a wholesale system. We wanted to produce a low-cost, uh, sustainable process here. And the enzyme that can carry out this, this step so is well known, but it's part of a biologic system, and it's not easily accessible or easily scalable. So we went ahead and searched for other P450 enzymes through the collection that we have. And in-house, we did find an enzyme that worked on the reaction, but it produced the, uh, the incorrect epimer, the one we didn't want. So in order to, uh, to then have a scalable route, we needed to do some enzyme engineering to flip over that selectivity. So we did that. We, we looked at the structure of the enzyme itself. We analyzed the mutations that would need to be made within the enzyme to flip the selectivity. Uh, we carried out some engineering on the enzyme, and then we went ahead and um, in a number of iterations uh, came up with the enzyme that did indeed produce the material that we were looking for. And you can see that by the chromatographic traces here. Uh, we made uh, four, uh, well, three mutations in four out of five uh, amino acid locations within the enzyme, and it completely flipped the, the unwanted epimer to the wanted epimer. And that's now a uh, commercially scalable process within DSM. Uh, example number two, this is uh, the use of an aldolase. Um, it, this can be used in the production of a number of statin intermediates. The process was developed um, a while back and has been scaled up since. And um, now with uh, Lipitor coming off patent recently, um, DSM through our dsm Sinochem joint venture are now selling significant amounts of the Lipitor API, uh, which was produced via this enzymatic process. So this is scaled up to the uh, certainly the tens of ton scale with the potential to go higher. We 
had a liaise process here. This was for a compound called S INDAC. We developed this one quite a while ago now. Um, originally, it was a seven step process, uh, but in combination of biocatalysis and a chemocatalytic um, uh, copper catalyzed step, uh, we reduced this process down to two steps only. And uh, this has also been scaled up and uh, productions carried out at the hundreds of ton level. And for a fourth example, we have the, uh, the farmer uh, pig liver esterase, which is used for a uh, number of resolutions here. Now, one of the main issues here, pig liver esterase has been known for a while, but within the farmer industry, the use of animal-derived products is uh, clearly not desirable at all. So uh, we don't want to kill Porky the pig there and grind his liver to uh, produce pharmaceuticals. So what we did, um, we took out a number of the genes from the pig liver esterase itself, expressed these in various hosts, and with some development, we eventually came up with a fully synthetic, recombinant, non-animal-derived pig liver esterase. So this was then used in commercial production for a client, and we've uh, carried out reactions on a number of different molecules now, and this uh, particular enzyme is only available from DSM. So the advantages for the pharmaceutical industry, as mentioned, we can't use animal-derived uh, pro products in uh, synthesis, so this is non-animal derived, kosher and halal where necessary, um, it's a very good stable enzyme, and uh, it is scalable up to the multi-ton scale. Uh, this week we had a press release announcing a collaboration with Almac. Um, Almac are a company in Northern Ireland who are offering a lot of services, uh, particularly in early development and clinical development of the pharmaceutical industry. They do have their own uh, platform of enzymes as well. So what this collaboration allows us to do is combine our platforms together, um, offer additional enzymes for screening, and it also offers a full integrated manufacturing solution whereby from the initial screening, um, Almac can uh, carry out some of the initial GMP manufacturing and clinical trial support, and then DSM are able to offer that full scale up to the multi-ton uh, uh, multi level. And we also have two teams of uh, scientists who can work together to solve problems and bring our minds together there. So I mentioned uh, DSM are using over 3,000 uh, over the um, uh, available enzymes, uh, off-the-shelf enzymes here. Uh, it's partly with the collaboration with Almac, but with uh, collaborations with a number of other companies here, um, one of which is represented by a number of people at the back. Um, so we have a very large open-sourced way of getting the best enzyme that solves your synthetic solution. So what's our value proposition here? This is, a, uh, this is with Almac here. We can increase your chance of success by accessing uh, the world's largest overall off-the-shelf enzyme collection. Um, the scientific continuity throughout the collaboration as both teams are working together. Uh, we're a one-stop shop from preclinical to commercial manufacturing, really from milligrams to tons of material. Uh, we can fix a sustainable route right from the very early stages of route scouting and development and there's a seamless transition as we do carry out that scale up. So we end up with a win-win a solution for our clients. So I want to move quickly on now to uh, continuous flow chemistry and uh, what some of the work DSM are doing here. Uh, what we're basically doing with continuous flow is taking uh, two chemical reagents, which are typically uh, at the moment liquid and gas, but there are solid solutions coming in, and mixing them in a tube. And the way that they're mixed allows handling of hazardous reagents, um, reagents which may be toxic, um, reagents which may be particularly energetic, and it allows us to mix them under a situation which is very safe to handle and very scalable. What we're really doing here is we're controlling the reaction conditions. We're making the process extremely predictable. The piece of kit you're using is really a fixed piece of kit. So you're measuring the inputs, you know exactly what happens in the kit, and you're measuring the outputs. So you, uh, you basically are using quality by, by design approach to come up with the route that you're going to use. And when you then apply it, it becomes a very standard route, which you can uh, move forward to any scale. Um, 
So risk on scale-up is removed. Also, uh, reducing costs for control and supervision is a key aspect here. Um, you're no longer in batch. Uh, cleaning costs are reduced significantly here. Uh, In-process analytical tests are used, so you don't need to be pulling samples and looking at them separately. It's a very different approach to manufacturing, and one which is now starting to come into the pharmaceutical industry in, uh, I'd, say, I'd say, quite a big way. It's quite early days yet, but uh, things are definitely picking up here. So we can design a new or improved process, uh, design an associated plant there, the footprint of which is typically very small. Um, the manufacturing itself is sustainable, both through the small footprint and energy use of the plant, uh, but also through intensifying these processes. It allows safe handling of energetic chemistries. And uh, we have proven regulatory compliance. Um, to, to my knowledge, there's only two examples at the moment where flow chemistry has been uh, fully approved for API production with CGMP. One is within a innovative pharma company, and one is at uh, DSM's Lintz manufacturing facility. So the question is, what is continuous processing? Um, most basic overview here, continuous manufacturing process where the starting materials will flow continually through a plant. You'll have inputs going in. It'll take a certain amount of time, so a defined trajectory to undergo the reactions. You can do multiple steps in this system, and you have a product continually flowing out of the end. And all through this process, you are looking at the quality, uh, you're, you're looking at the analytical parameters, and you can basically turn the, turn the tap on and turn the tap off to run the process efficiently. And the way we do this is typically um, through some narrow channels that we call, uh, I guess, micro-reactor channels. Um, we'll put A in, B out. We'll pass through uh, the capillaries here. There's a heat exchanger going on. And this is particularly of interest for energetic chemistries. And then when it comes to scaling up, we first of all start with a, a certain diameter on the micro-reactor capillaries. That can be optimized initially in scale up. But at some point, you just start to number up. So you'll, you'll add additional capillaries in array. And when you really need to have a commercial operating plant, you can then uh, continue to number up, but put a, a manifold system into place which maximizes the productivity of your route. So actually within the plant, I'll talk about the process in a moment, um, you can start off with some very simple equipment, basically tubular equipment. There are then uh, kits available uh, from a variety of companies like Chemtrix or Corning, uh, which are fairly standard systems which you can put into place in the laboratory to do your initial scale-up work. Uh, when you have the conditions set in these kits here, it's then the case of numbering up into the plant. So you have an array of these microreactors put together. Then for production, you'll add additional arrays. And the, these are uh, pictures from our GMP facility at Lintz. And then the pro process that we had scaled up to uh, commercial manufacturing and had qualified with GMP, we had uh, some novel systems built for us which really maximized the ability for us to uh, carry out production in flow chemistry. So the first example I'll give, this is a, an API. Um, the process is nitration. So typically the batch would operate at a low temperature. It's a very exothermic mix. Um, it's a, a fairly unpleasant reaction and it has potential to be explosive and the productivity is very poor. So in putting this into a flow reactor, we're able to control a lot of these parameters and deliver the material very, um, I'd say in a very safe, productive manner. Uh, this was also carried out under CGMP production. And I think in talking to clients, we do have questions about the, the FDA and other regulatory bodies' uh, reactions to uh, flow chemistry. If you look to the guidance, there's, there's really not a lot of guidance out there. Um, there are some, um, some guidances around the definition of what a lot is, and that's actually very easily implemented um, when you come to the lab. But we had absolutely no problem at all in working with the FDA to get the plant uh, and that particular process qualified. So this shouldn't be considered a hurdle if you're looking at putting any of your roots into flow chemistry. And I'd be happy to talk more about that if you have interest there. Also, the production of diazoacetate. So this looks like a fairly simple reaction in itself, uh, which indeed it is. However, 
Do not transport, do not store, no mineral acids, no metal ions, it's explosive. So if you're gonna be using it in a plant environment, first of all, how are you gonna get it there and source it? And secondly, how are you gonna handle it? So in a flow chemistry setup, you can go ahead and carry out exactly the same reaction in a very c controlled environment, and you can produce in the plant in situ before you go into, uh, into your reaction vessel. So you come up with uh, a reduction of all the handling problems that you'd have before, reduction of transportation problems, uh, making your supply chain more secure, and uh, you end up overall with a safer process. So the use of continuous flow really does turn a lot of current uh, challenges within uh, manufacturing into opportunities. So if you can't store or use the reagent, um, you can then produce on demand. If you need uh, cryogenic conditions or high pressure, you can operate these, these um, flow reactors uh, continuously at a higher temperature in much smaller equipment. Um, if there are patent issues, you can create your own IP position. Um, if you don't want to invest in full-scale equipment, you don't have to invest in flow. These, these are available for lease, or you can uh, come to a CMO to manufacture, and then invest only as the product grows. And if there's a high catalyst cost, then the use of some of the conditions that you can uh, implement in flow chemistry can remove the need for the, uh, the additional catalyst there. And uh, there's a lot of chemistries um, accessible so far. I should say at this point, flow's actually been available and used for a long time in the chemical industry. It's just in the pharma industry. It's uh, coming into play um, more recently. Uh, within DSM, we have uh, commercial recon second generation routes here uh, for the re Ritter reaction and nitration. In laboratory development, we've got a number of other processes. And then going back up to some of the more research-oriented um, work that we're doing, uh, these are all the accessible chemistries through flow chemistry. So, in conclusion, um, DSM Pharmaceutical Chemicals is your partner of choice for green sustainable root scouting, for biocatalysis, chemocatalysis, and continuous flow tools. We have proven scale up, CGMP manufacturing, and a unmatched record in on-time in-quality delivery. And we are involved in contract manufacturing, as you know. Uh, we also have a product portfolio, which we're uh, developing using these green sustainable techniques. And uh, any of us would be very pleased to talk to you at the booth in Hall 9, um, booth F25. Uh, please come by. And uh, gracias por su atención.